Hey guys, welcome to Lintang. We carry on our journey to this colorful, magical land to see its minorities and more of its amazing landscapes. Welcome to Travelog. After visiting Xuanzang and Tangyuan in the last two episodes, we finally make it to Mengding. Again, here the people are completely different. They're mostly Dai, and the majority follow a peaceful Buddhist way of life. Hey guys, well, since we've been in Lintang, this place has just been mind-boggling, just how rich the different cultures are and the different minorities here. Like in Xuanzang, you have the four minorities, you have the Dai, the Lahu, the Bulang and the Wa. And then we went to Sanyun County, which is territory to the Wa, and all the buildings had like this, this symbol of the Wa, which is a big ox head, bull head with its massive horns on them. And here, last stop in Mengding, Gangma, the moment we got here, it just felt different. And that's because most people here are of the Dai minority and they believe strongly in Buddhism, a southern form of Buddhism. And here, without Buddhism, there is no culture for the Dai. And in this building behind me, somewhere inside, you'll be able to find the remains of Sakyamuni Buddha and more precisely his collarbone, which makes this place officially one of the most sacred places in the whole of the region. Hungry? No? Well, I am. Mmm, ant eggs, one of the Dai's favorite dishes. This is like sticky rice, local sticky rice. Which, uh, you know, give it a good scrunch. Yeah. A bit of the ant eggs. I mean, these are absolutely massive. Mmm, <laughs> yum. Tasty stuff. So tasty, in fact, that we decide to get up early, check out where the local produce comes from by going to the local dye market. Last time I went to, I was in a market was in Tangyan County, which was a Wa minority market. And it wasn't quite as hustling and bustling as this place, but still quite quite a colourful place to start off the day, you know. On our way to the market, we bumped into Mr. Jing again, who was pretty happy to show us around. This is my new local friend, Mr. Jing, right here. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's been showing me around actually, he just came up to me and just showing me the ropes, you know? Oh, Xuan Sai. Thanks to Mr. Jing, getting around Meng Ding is made infinitely easier and more enjoyable. Si Jing. Si Jing. Si Jing. What, what, I, what I love about, since I've been here in Lintang, in Yunnan, Yunnan province, is that it's home to so many different species of, of flowers and, 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 and vegetables that you can eat. So it's the perfect place to lose a bit of weight, to eat healthily, you know, if you're that way inclined. From veggies to ants. Hmm. Hey, these look familiar. Yeah, we had some of those last night with the, uh, they told me it's only ants, but actually there's like bees in there as well and like all sorts of stuff, so lovely bugs. Whatever it is, if it's veggies, ants or meats, 
you won't have any problems with the freshness of the products around here. <laughs> nah, it's just a pig's heart. Everyone's so friendly here. They don't mind if I go up, touch their pig's ear and mess around with the pig's heart and, you know, generally just messing around with all their, their local produce. Join us as we witness Dai culture in all its glory, from Buddhist temples to local dance performances. All this coming up on Travelogue. Join us for our final leg of the Lintang series. Immerse yourself in Dai culture and experience the celebrations of this warm and hospitable ethnic minority. All this coming up on Travelog. Luckily for us, We've been fortunate enough to be invited by Mr. Jing to attend one of his friends' performance of a traditional local Dai dance. In fact, back in the day, Mr. Jing was even a well-known dancer himself. The Dai have many dancers, but among the most popular are the Red Deer Dance and the Peacock Dance. The dancers themselves are passed down from generation to generation, and Mr. Tsai is in fact one of the inheritors of the dance. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is the deer's, the inside of the deer's head there. And then with the hand, obviously, playing around with the, the deer's head, giving it that very popping, you know, popping type movement, which I can't do without cricking my neck. That can't be easy because obviously the deer's head's got to pick up all the money. I've run out of cash now, but but then they've got to coordinate the legs and make sure if the money's not in the right place, put the leg, put the money back, use their legs and then use their hands. Sahani. I just learnt my one word, which means beautiful. Now I'm really embarrassed. This is called the peacock dance. We're lucky to be able to witness such a performance, especially with all the gear. Usually, one would have to imagine what the peacock looks like through the dance moves alone. Beautiful. Beautiful. Be beautiful menu, beautiful. Oh. Sahani, beautiful. Mahani? <laughs> <laughs> uh, handsome. Handsome. Sahani, we are going to you can do a little shot to Liga. Very hypnotic dance. Very hypnotic. Completely different from what we had with the wah. The wah dance was very, very different to this. This is a lot more delicate. I think I'm getting the hang of this. I think. The dance is not so difficult to learn, which means anyone can join in, even me. This is the second phase of our Thai dance. And I'm almost there mastering it, I'm hoping. The Dai are some of the most hospitable people I have met and they're eager for all of us to learn about their dances, culture and food. I'm getting schooled in the way of the, the Buddhist beads. What catches my eye are the Buddhist tattoos on everyone's arms. These are for protection and good luck. The first one people get usually around five or six years old. Well, every village has its own temple, and lucky Mr. Sai, this temple is pretty much in his backyard, so he can literally hop, make his way across here for for morning prayer. Hello. Uh, This southern form of Buddhism, otherwise known as Hinayana Buddhism, arrived in Lintang during the Sui dynasty in the 6th century. For the Dai, the temple is the center of the community. Here, people will grow up, learn about their culture and Buddhism. 
It's also here that the adults can go, hang out, have a chat, or even a couple of drinks during the day. This old monk here is over 90 years old and has spent his entire life in this temple. A couple of miles away, you'll find Gongyi Fosa Temple. The reason we come here is to get up close and personal with the monks and to find out what life is like for the children that live there. The most respected members of Dai society are monks or were monks in the past. Children are initiated into temple life at a young age, undergoing a very strict daily routine. Wake up is at 5 a.m., followed by prayer, breakfast and classes. Free time is limited and tasks like cleaning and maintaining the grounds are handed out to keep the kids busy and to instill discipline. For many of the children, these are the first formative years of their education. During our time at the temple, we notice that the kids speak very softly. Silence is golden, as they say. Hinayana Buddhism, which is sometimes referred to as Small Wheel Buddhism, came to China via Myanmar. This form of Buddhism closely resembles and is connected to Dai's daily lives. We end our tour of the temples at the largest temple in Mengding. When we arrive, we meet the head monk who's been given the honor of representing the Dai in Sri Lanka for a Buddhist festival. Join us as we discover an ancient Dai paper-making village. Immerse yourself in the festivities of the Dai Water Festival and enjoy the culinary delights in Mengding. All this coming up on Travelog. If you're in Mengding, I definitely recommend you'd head over to the Dai village of Jinkang. Here, you can find an entire village exclusively focused on one thing, paper making. Wow, this is serious stuff. This is one of China's four great inventions. The traditional way, original way, which they still have in this Dai village of paper making. Me and Paper Lady got a bit of an African beat going there together. <laughs> right now, what we need to do, part of the process is to get the fibers to be shorter so that they can interlink with each other and can later on float up in the water more easily and create the, that, that much wanted sheet and which we can then dry out later and call paper. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Seems like she's trying to get a really thin layer of layer layer of strands and try to make it as smooth as possible. It's quite a delicate process really. This method of paper making has been passed down from generation to generation, from mothers to daughters. Whilst the men were away fighting wars, the females would need a way to make a living in the event that their husbands wouldn't return home. Paper making allowed them to make a little money and thus survive. Oh, wow. Very nice. There you have it. This is one of the final parts where we hope to make this paper a reality. Dry it out in the sun. Looking forward to see the results later on. I'm just chilling with my favourite ladies in, in this <laughs> dye paper making village and uh, actually one, once the paper is dried um, it will go on the market and will cost about one RMB uh, but what's really amazing about it is that in, the in ancient times and still to this day it was really highly in demand uh, people would use uh, would really want this paper to wrap the, the, the famous tea in Lintang called Puar Tea. And also, Buddhist monks would also highly value this paper. They'd write their sutras on it. Uh, and this is pretty much the finished product right here. Get a look at that. Wow. Well, from Paper Making Village, Two local dye homes. This lucky man, this is his house, and he's actually been building the house. So everyone's been invited around, and you know there's going to be food on the table, and uh, a lot of a lot of celebration coming up. Uh, there's nothing quite like your next door neighbor's new house to get one excited, start celebrating. Just trying to help work the way I can. Oh, what is this? Take a Oh. Oh my god, what's up? What's up? Ah, the whole place, the whole town. All the villagers are coming and celebrating their good friend's new house. Oh! Ni hao! Ah, shi jie li ya. Do, do zuo fan ma? Oh! Do shi mian de fan? Ah. Yeah, the food's not here. False trail, false trail. Uh, 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 we've got the queue ladies lining up with all their... Getting ready. Oh. <laughs> this is where all the food is. That looks delicious. Mm, and it smells great too. Some of the traditional sticky dye dye rice. Oh. Ah, it's a real community spirit here. Everyone helping everyone, everyone happy, and then eventually everyone drinking and eating. Nah, Sanghani. Sanghani is what is your name? He's good looking. Yeah, 
like there's beer there <laughs> under the table. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, I'll put out lots of dishes, lots of traditional dye dishes. They look absolutely appetizing. This is Swan Ro, this is Mr. Jing's favorite. Actually, if, there's, if, if he's eating and there's no Swan Ro, he is, you can see he's miserable. I've seen it before, trust me. Uh, Swan Ro, Xi Huang Ma. It's quite a cool celebration. The act of pouring water is a form of religious ritual that is widely believed to wash away bad luck. In fact, the more water is splashed on someone, the luckier he or she will be in the coming Dai New Year. If you really want to see the authentic dye water celebrations, then you won't get more authentic than in Nintan. Just when you thought the celebrations couldn't get even bigger, eat your food, then they start splashing water all over you for dessert. Here in Lintang, you certainly won't have any commercialized events, especially in Mengding. So I highly recommend you come here before tourism has its wicked way with this sleepy little town. Well, our two weeks long journey in southern Lintang has been an epic adventure. We immersed ourselves in the culture of some of Yunnan's most colorful ethnic minorities. This was an unforgettable journey. But hey, like all good things, it's got to come to an end. Guys, well, I can't tell you just what an amazing place Lintang is. There's been so many ups and there's been so many downs and at the end of it, you know, you just come out feeling so refreshed. It's a magical place, a hidden wonderland in the mountains. I hope you enjoyed the show. I just got one more thing to do before I go, which is to get Mr. Sai. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Sai. See you here. See you here. See you here. I'll see you next time, guys. See you next time on Travelog. Ha, 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 ha.